Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod. Welcome to another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I'm very fortunate to have with me today Glenn Robbins, superintendent of the Brigantine School District in New Jersey. Uh, Glenn has been on the job since February 1st. So talk about a uh, interesting introduction to his new school district. Uh, good stuff here. Um, Glenn, why don't you tell us a little bit about how your school district has been responding so far, where you've been investing your energy and efforts? Uh, thanks, Scott. It's a pleasure to be on here. Um, you know, starting a job February 1 was obviously unique, but, uh, you know, a little bit of hindsight. I did go in a bunch of times before that time uh, to get acclimated with the staff in the community. Um, you know, one of the big things that we did was about a week and a half, two weeks before this all started really coming down to southern New Jersey, was that we put together a giant team of team meetings and we brought in our uh, chiefs of police, fire, public works. Um, we had our mayor in contact. We had our city manager, our board of education, our administrators, and um, our food services. And we sat together as one big team and put all of our egos aside and said, what do we have to do to work, you know, together uh, as the months go on? And, you know, we worked together hand in hand. And then we had another meeting a day before we officially closed the fifth building physically. So, you know, the joy or the pride of that in my eyes is that we work together as one. And since that time, we're still constantly on Zoom chats. We're still phone calling each other, making sure whether it's just to check in to see how they're doing um, and or, you know, see what's going on in the island. So, you know, our biggest thing where we are is that we are a large casino based area uh, with Atlantic City. And we have a lot of people that work in that general area and or go to uh, Philadelphia and or to New York. So you can understand where we are in New Jersey. And, you know, when the casinos closed and all the jobs started skyrocketing into unemployment, that was a major concern of ours from the very start. So, um, you know, we wanted to be proactive in those areas about mental health. And we wanted to be proactive in how we can continue to provide an education without overwhelming these families. Um, you know, some live in some glorious mansions and others live in, you know, single room condos. So, we, you know, and that's across the country, that's a reality. So we had to understand that. Uh, we all decided to go to an asynchronous schedule. So that way families that are still workers, you know, the essential or first responders, you know, there's a lot of mental stress on them. And then when they come home, you know, trying to work with their children. And then there are the ones that are home, you know, they might have, um, you know, limited technology. So we've handed out Chromebooks of need, um, but we also are mindful that there might be a family of three or four that might have one device. So, you know, our teachers take it day by day. We take it very calm and collective, clear voice that I, you know, asked them to be because our kids are always watching and they're learning so much from us right now on how we're handling and responding to this. Uh, as far as food services, we provide food um, twice a week. Um, our community is roughly about 45% free and reduced lunch. So, you know, one of the biggest things that we are focusing on is the um, health and well-being of those families as well. So we constantly put out phone calls saying, hey, if you recently uh, lost your job and or you think you're now eligible, please sign up and we can go through that paperwork with them. Um, and as far as food services, something we started right away from the get-go is we take the temperatures of the individuals before they work on their food. Uh, we asked them a couple of vital questions about what's going on health-wise and so forth, just because we did not want to uh, help spread anything that didn't need to be spread. Mm -hmm. And then we put together a pretty good cohesive plan, thanks to our SRO and our, like I said, team of teams, that we have a drop-off and we also have a grab-and-go situation. So... You know, I've been very fortunate to work with my administrative team and, and the island team that we have together. Um, but ultimately, as we go forward, you know, this continues to snowball. And our, and our biggest fear is, is the mental health aspect as it continues to go. So, Glenn, as a school district, what are you doing to support the mental health of not only your families, but also your staff? Well, you know, with the staff, um, every Friday or Thursday this past week, I bring in uh, an individual or friend of mine from uh, Twitter and or social media. And it's basically like a pump up session as a, um, uh, a pep rally in a way. So the first week we had uh, Tim Needles was gracious enough to come on there and he did art. And through mindfulness, uh, this past week we had Tom Murray, which everybody knows. Uh, Tom came in and gave a half an hour speech. 
Um, you know, next week, this week we have coming up will be Don Wetrick, then we'll have Ivana Roth. Um, and it's all people on there that basically are providing information to our staff members to help them go through this process, you know, from various points of view. And there are all practitioners for the most part that helps them get through. So um, that's the staff aspect. As far as the administrative team, um, we meet, you know, once a week, but we're also on a group chat of a texting and so forth. Um, so we're always checking in on each other, making sure that everybody's okay, you know, so because each family is in a different spot and each family does have uh, different children in the household and or, you know, trying to get through like we are. Uh, as far as the students, the staff has been amazing. You know, from the very get-go, we said that any phone calls and Zoom chats should be right away a check-in. You know, hey, how you doing? What can we do for you? You know, it shouldn't be, you know, right away, here's your assignment, and this is due by a certain time. No, push that aside. It was about compassion first and grace, you know, over those, uh, you know, rigors and compliance issues and so forth. So we really, you know, the staff has been amazing with that. The administrative staff reaches out to the teachers, and they reach out to the students as well. Um, I make roughly five to ten phone calls a day as well to uh, board members, to our administrative team, to teachers, just to check in on them and making sure that they're, you know, they're doing okay. Because like I said, ultimately, this is about being human beings first. And we'll get through that education. And we, we realize, too, that as things evolve, uh, two big things we really pushed hard on uh, about a week and a half ago was that we, we revamped our spring break. So Jersey is spring break is technically this week. And we took that away. We only kept today and we kept Friday, Good Friday, as the days off. So we have four-day weekend. And then we removed Tuesday through Friday so we could keep our building physically and virtually open so we could provide food to families. So, you know, if we were closed, then we could not provide that food. And that was a serious uh, stressor on my back. And I did not want to deprive these families who are struggling and say, oh, yeah, by the way, Ben, for getting food yourself this week, you know, after each week, it wouldn't be fair. So we, we did that to help them. And then the other thing was we recently just went uh, for a fourth market fair, we pass fail. You know, so we're going to go more project based or design thinking projects and, you know, and, and single point rubrics and so forth. But, you know, understanding that there's still accountability for those families and kids. But at the same time, we understand that they're going through a lot and each person's in this, you know, in a different storm than what we are. So we're, we're very empathetic in regards to that. Right. So, Glenn, you know, one of the um, big concerns of many districts, of course, is taking care of their students with special needs. What's that look like in your district? You know, I think we're very fortunate to have an amazing uh, leader right there. Uh, Lisa Glick is our director of special services, and we have an incredible child study team. Uh, and right from the get-go, it's the same thing. All of our teachers, special ed teachers, they've all reached out to those kids. Uh, Jersey, this, this past week, finally passed that uh, um, the special services can be provided now before it was going to be like when we get back, which obviously is not probably going to happen. Right. So now that we're able to do that, they're able to provide, you know, speech therapy, PTOT through Zoom conferences and so forth. But that's going to be a somewhat of a struggle, obviously, depending on the grade and the, and the age of the child and the, obviously the disabilities. But our staff has been resilient in trying to work with each and every family to what works best with them. So, you know, like I said, we're, I think we're very fortunate in that regard, and we're going to do everything we can possibly humanly do to help each child. Cool. So thanks, Glenn, for sharing on that. You're the first soup I've asked on that question. Um, so, you know, we're a few weeks in. What seems to be working really well right now? Well, I think that what works really well for us is just the interconnectivity that we have, that communication. You know, we've made it a point very in the beginning that, where there is no communication, the negativity starts to fill that void. Um, you know, what's working well is our food services, our, our technology staff um, goes in and hands out, you know, the Chromebooks to families of need. Obviously, you know, as good things go on in a household with young kids, computers break, stuff gets spilled, you know, things like that. So we're able to help them out. Um, you know, I think the interconnectivity of everyone on the island together working as one helps. I think the uh, the resources and the leadership from our, our county office, the Department of Ed, have been outstanding as well, working with us and, and guiding us that we need. 
Um, and I think that one of the great things too is we're, we're seeing our teachers, you know, take new steps and leaps into different types of lessons, you know, and, uh, you know, that's kind of exciting for me because as this evolves, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, um, what will our lessons look like when we go back and how are we going to use this to somewhat of an advantage? So, you know, one of the things in my mind is that we've already started talking about, we have to design a strategic plan uh, for the years coming up. And how are we going to use this as a springboard? So, you know, so for me, I'm looking at this as a great opportunity to really uh, revamp and restructure some of our learning capacities and uh, areas to really move forward as this with an advantage. Yeah, perfect. Uh, anticipated challenges uh, over the next couple months, or maybe even heading into summer? You know, I, I, like I said, the challenges is like pretty much where everybody's at. You know, it's the unemployment's continue to go up. The challenges of families continuing to deal with uh, sickness and death. Uh, the challenges of that, you know, people would have to wait for a particular funeral. Um, the money issues, the mental health issues. Uh, I'm a firm believer that this is going to be not just economic um, pandemic for years to come, but also a mental health um, pandemic for years to come. You know, you're, you're getting to a point where there's no longer going to be fear of missing out. It's going to be a fear of going out, right. you know, and people are going to start wondering, do I really need to go to a party? Do I really need to go out to this place after we're deemed okay to go back out? Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that mental aspect there is a lot on people's shoulders, mine included. You know, I go shopping and I come home and I, I quickly strip down, leave my clothes out in the garage. I feel like I should burn them, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I go shower and then, you know, uh, and I try to do masks and gloves and everything else that's required and Clorox and wiping down because I have a, like I said, I have a young child and then I have a, a little boy too. So, you know, that mental piece is, is going to be huge. And I think that's something schools are going to prepare for, not just the technology and the infrastructures, but how are they going to not only help the students, but also your staff and also all the communities, you know, and then you're going to talk about, you know, people that lose their businesses. How do they come back up after this? You know, so it, these, these families and all of us are all in it together. But I think we need to be very cognitive of what mental health may look like now and in the future for come. Yeah, no, excellent point. Um, Glenn, we're kind of at the end of our time here. Is there anything else you want to share? No, Scott, I just want to say thank you for letting me come on here. Uh, your series has been great. Uh, I've been listening to different people from across the country and globe, actually. And, um, you know, it, it gives us different perspectives and it gives us a little guidance. And I, I thank you for what you're doing right now. And like I said, I think each one of us that's in these chairs uh, relies heavily on our teams and relies heavily on the, the human spirit. And that's as only as we're only as good as the people around us. And, you know, I'm very blessed to have some amazing people around me right now and, and yourself included adding me into this. So thank you for making me better. Well, that's very kind of you, Glenn. Thanks. Um, I don't know how to end on a better note than that. So <laughs> I'll just say thanks to Glenn uh, and uh, good luck in your community with um, the next couple months and um, we'll be strong and safe together, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you.